Hi guys, if we flip our NCRT books to chapter 9, we'll see a chapter called Some Applications of Trigonometry. Now this is a very interesting chapter. It does not have much theory, but it builds on from chapter 8 that was Introduction to Trigonometry. And it talks about a lot of examples that we see in our daily lives about trigonometry. Now trigonometry is the oldest subject of study and it's used a lot for measuring heights and distances. Let me first take a few concepts. Let's talk about line of sight. We are aware about what line of sight is. It's nothing but the straight line between any object and the eyes. So if these were the eyes and this is the object, a celestial body or it may be the top of a building or it may just be a bird flying. So the straight line between these two points that is the eyes and the body is known as line of sight. So this straight line is the line of sight. Now let's see what we mean by angle of elevation. Now basically the angle that the line of sight makes with the horizontal level. So if this was the horizontal level then the angle above the horizontal level that the line of sight would make is known as the angle of elevation. So this angle is the angle of elevation. Now what if we were not looking upwards? Say we had to look downwards. In that case the horizontal level would remain the same, this one. The eyes would be somewhere here and the object would be below the eyes, say somewhere here. So the line of sight would be this one. Here we don't have an angle of elevation but we have an angle of depression. So the angle that is formed below the horizontal level is known as the angle of depression. So now that we are clear about the concepts of what a line of sight is and what is the angle of elevation and angle of depression, let's just take a look at a few examples. So the first example is here. Say an electrician has to repair a fault on a pole which is 5 meter tall. She needs a ladder to reach 1.3 meters below the top of the pole so that she can repair the fault what should be the length of the ladder so that it reaches the required position at an angle of 60 degrees? Also, how far from the foot of the pole should the base of the ladder be placed? Now the first step to go about this problem is to draw a figure. We are given a vertical pole of length 5 meters. So there will be a vertical pole, something like this. Let's call this AB. So AB is given as 5 meters. Now, we need to place a ladder on the ground such that the angle is 60 degrees from the ground. So let this be the ground. Let me draw a ladder that reaches 1.3 meters from the top of the pole here. So let this be the point C and this is the ladder. Let this be point D. So this ladder forms an angle of 60 degrees and point C is 1.3 meters below the point A that is the top of the pole. So we can say AC is equal to 1.3 meters angle CDB is 60 degrees. Can we find out the length of BC? So length of BC would be AB minus AC this is nothing but 5 meters minus 1.3 meters. So BC is nothing but 3.7 meters. Correct. So we know this height. This height is 3.7 meters. We have to find out the length of the ladder and the distance between points B and D. Because the question asks how far from the foot of the pole should the base of the ladder be placed. So we have to find out this distance as well. So I'll just write it down to find CD and BD. These two lengths we have to find out. 
And it's actually pretty simple if we look at it carefully. Here, triangle B, C, D is a right angle triangle because this pole is nothing but perpendicular to the ground. So this angle here, angle B is 90 degrees. And when we have a right angle triangle, we can always apply the concepts of trigonometry, correct? Yes. So this triangle, triangle CBD is a right angle triangle, right angled at B and angle D here is 60 degrees, this angle. So we have to find out CD, CD is the hypotenuse and we know the length of BC. So when we are considering angle D, because angle D is known to us, BC is the side opposite to angle D and hence can be called the perpendicular. So what ratio involves the perpendicular and the hypotenuse, sine of angle D and cosec of angle D. Let's take sine of angle D. So sine of D would be perpendicular or BC by the hypotenuse that was CD and angle D is 60 degrees. So sine 60 from the table we remember sine 60 is root 3 by 2 and BC is known to us to be 3.7 meters. So this equation becomes 3.7 meters by CD equal to root 3 by 2. From this we will get CD equal to 2 times 3.7 meters by root 3. So we know root 3 can be taken as 1.73. 2 into 3.7 would be 7.4 meters by root 3 and root 3 can be approximated to be 1.73. So when we divide this we get CD as 4.28 meters. You can take your time and calculate this just divide it by long division method and we'll get 4.28 meters approximately. So now we know the length of the ladder is 4.28 meters. Just observe that I took the units along during the whole calculation and finally also I got CD as 4.28 meters. This is a good practice to follow and it helps us take care of the units and we don't mess up between meters, kilometers or centimeters like that. So let's see how we can find out BD. Now BD is nothing but the adjacent side of angle D and it can be called the base. So what is the ratio that involves the base and the perpendicular? Yes, tan theta and cot theta. So if I take tan of angle D, that would be BC or the perpendicular by the base that is BD. This implies tan of 60 degrees is equal to BC was 3.7 meters by BD that is unknown and we know tan 60 is equal to root 3. So from this we can write BD as 3.7 meters by root 3 and root 3 is 1.73. So from here we get BD as 2.14 meters approximately. So we know BD is 2.14 meters and hence we've solved the problem. So in these types of problems the first step is to draw the figure and see where the right angle triangle is formed and then apply the required ratios and find out the distances. It's pretty simple actually.